Dragons Live, presented by Form Communications. Hello everyone, I'm John Webby Webking, and welcome to a very special Dragons March On episode of Dragons Live. Tonight, we're celebrating the MSUM student athletes who punched their ticket to the NCAA National Championships across the country. Be sure to follow all the action by clicking on the Dragons March On button on msumdragons.com or download the Dragons app for coverage of each competition. Now, let's look at the whole bunch of Dragons heading to national starting with wrestler Zach Scott. He'll represent MSUM at 141 pounds in Cedar Rapids, Iowa on Friday morning. As of selection Sunday night, we learned that the Dragon women's basketball team will be heading back to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year to face Central Missouri in the first round on Friday at 2.30 p.m. at the Elman Center on the campus of Augustana University, the host of the regional in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We've got indoor track and field's Brian Huber in the long jump on Friday afternoon in Pittsburgh, Kansas and senior Aaron Sullivan will swim the 100 backstroke, and Bria Anderson will swim the 50 free next weekend in Greensboro, North Carolina. We're starting today with the most recently notified national qualifier, the Dragon women's basketball team, who rode the bubble for an entire week after their loss to USF in the NSIC tournament. But they got the at-large bid to enter the NCAA national tournament in the central region as the seven seed, Here's coach Carla Nelson, Drew Sanis, and Cass Thorson talking about riding the bubble all the way to the big dance. All right, coach, just had a room full of screaming players. What was that like? Well, you know, it's been a stressful last couple of days, and uh, especially what happened yesterday with all the upsets in, in the other conferences. And, uh, you know, we watch it, so uh, everybody knows what was going on. Uh, very stressful. Um, long day today, uh, but well worth the wait just to get that opportunity to uh, see if we can do some stuff in the regional. And we're in. How does that feel? It's kind of surreal still. Um, honestly, you know, we thought our chances were kind of slim as we watched the other conferences play out this weekend. So right now it's surreal, but obviously we're, we're really excited to get back there and, you know, go in and win one game at a time. What was it like to see your name called for the selection show again for a second year? Uh, it was a great feeling. It was just um, we were waiting for this all weekend, watching the other teams play and knowing we didn't really have any control over that, just kind of seeing who was going to win. And, you know, and so when we finally saw our name pop up, it, we just, it was like overly uh, just joyed. Being on the bubble, what's that like? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I feel like our stomachs have been in knots all week, kind of just thinking about you know, um, that we have no control. Your opponent is a familiar one. Yeah. Tell me about him. Played him last year. Um, didn't go how we wanted. Uh, I just didn't think we played our best bat uh, game of basketball that we could have, and this year it's going to be different. Last year we made it into the regional. I know we didn't have our best performance. Um, what's the mentality going to be like this time to prepare them for that game again? Well, you know, we just have to get back to doing what we, we did well, which was play together well offensively. We have to defend tougher and rebound the ball a little bit better um, and not, um, and I would just say execute better. So I, I think that those things we have to look at. Uh, you know what? We're going to face a team that plays really good defense, um, and it's, it's kind of a, a different type team where they're a little smaller than we are, so we're going to have to adjust to that. Um, but the good thing is I think we have some different personnel groups that I can prepare. And, uh, you know, all I will tell you right now is we will be ready to play. The lone qualifier for the Dragons in the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships in Pittsburgh, Kansas this weekend is senior Brian Huber, who's very familiar with the national stage. Take a look. I mean, I think I, I definitely know what to expect now. A lot of the guys that I've seen on the list, I've jumped against in the past, so that helps a lot. Um, you know, I think nerves play a big part of it. Um, I think it's important to be nervous, but I, I'll, I think it's bad to be, you know, too nervous. And so now that I know exactly what to expect, I know, you know, what I need to do to compete well, uh, I think that'll help me be, you know, a little bit more calm. And um, so I should be a little bit more focused and ready this time. So injuries have been a big setback for me. Um, you know, my, my heel has been really bothering me, and it, it still does, but um, I've been, figuring out how to 
you know, hold that back a little bit and um, really working with the trainers and my coaches to figure out what I can and cannot do in practice. So um, this year I'm actually feeling a lot better. Um, luckily, I think I'm ready to hopefully pop off a big jump and, and do well at nationals. Finally got a couple good jumps in uh, earlier this season. Uh, conference didn't go so well. I scratched all three of my jumps, so it was kind of rough, but um, had a decent enough jump to get me in there. I think I'm seated 12th right now, so not as uh, well as I have been in going into nationals in the past, but uh, all it takes is just getting there, so that's the uh, main thing I'm focused on right now, just competing well once I'm there. So, I mean, my goals for nationals are just the same as any other meet, really. It's uh, I go to every meet hoping and and feeling that I can win, and so this one really is no different. I want to I wanna win nationals, I want to be a national champion, I want to set a new personal best, and that's, that's really it. Uh, first time I saw Brian Huber compete, he was a senior at the section meet here at Moorhead. So um, it was kind of one of those things where you just saw him excelling at a number of different events, which when you're recruiting as a track coach, uh, that's an awesome thing to see. So. Uh, talked to him, talked to his parents, you know, thought he was a good kid, um, you know, just pretty humble, pretty grounded, uh, just went from there. Uh, where we're at now, um, it's been interesting because I've been able to watch him develop for five years. And a lot of the stuff I saw five years ago has been, you know, kind of the core of who he is. Humble, quiet, puts his head down and just puts in work and produces results. So, yeah, you know, I think it says a lot about two things. Um, First, you know, like you said, just his character. He's not a kid who's going to give up. If things get challenging, he just kind of figures out how to work through it, um, you know, refocus and move on to the next thing. Conference meet was a great example. Um, long jump is obviously his marquee thing. He struggled and then came back and, and contributed to the team in, in two more events. A lot of people that just one bad thing would have shaken him up and they'd have been off for the rest of the meet, and um, that's, that's not who he is. Part of that, I think, is having you know Coach Barry here working with him. There aren't many teams around that have a coach who's kind of experienced that level of competition. You know, um, sort of someone there that he can turn to and have guidance from and bounce ideas off of, and who's been there and has done that. Um, I think that's an outstanding resource, and I think that some of the the things we're seeing where he's excelling this year, that's there's a direct correlation to that relationship. Uh, I'm happy to see it. You know, he missed last year outdoor, uh, and someone who you know has really high expectations for themselves. Uh, you hate to see that happen. Um, yeah, so to see him return, uh, have an opportunity to earn another All-American, um, you know, some of the stuff we've been seeing in, in meets, um, I think it's gonna be more than potentially just another national meet. I think he's capable of doing something pretty special. The long jump is scheduled for 4.30 p.m. on Friday afternoon. Again, hit the Dragons March On button on msumdragons.com or download the Dragons app to follow along. We've got wrestling and swimming still to talk about. Stay right here for the Dragons Live Dragons March On special right after this. Another day. And just like every day, it never seems to slow down. But you have a plan. Grab a cup. Grab the paper and grab a little time, just for you. It's worth it. Don't get the paper? Just grab the phone. Call now and save up to 60% off the newsstand price. Journalists, bringing the story home every day. It's a new stay at the Courtyard by Marriott, located just minutes from downtown Fargo, local colleges, shopping centers, and several restaurants. The Courtyard features a 24-hour fitness center, 24-hour on-site Starbucks, and our bistro restaurant and lounge open for breakfast and dinner daily. Relax in one of our two indoor swimming pools and hot tub. The comfort your family needs close to all the action at the Courtyard by Marriott. Visit our website or call 218-284-1000. That's 218-284-1000. You always do this. You had a couple of pops in you and got cocky. Who's up for a game of wing roulette, you said? Because you thought it'd be funny to watch one of your friends get stuck with the hot one. But your friends, they got teriyaki, then spicy garlic, and then Asian zing. And now you're looking at the last one and you're thinking, my God, what have I done?
Welcome back to the Dragons Live Dragons March On special. Dragon Swimming and Diving has two athletes heading to North Carolina for the NCAA National Championships. Here's Aaron Sullivan, Bria Anderson, and head coach Todd Peters on prepping for the big one. Yeah, this is Aaron's third trip to Nationals, and so she really knows what to expect. And I think it's really been helping in our training to uh, knowing what, what she needs to focus on, what she needs to work on, what are the little things that she can do that are going to make a difference when she gets to that meet. Uh, and with Bria, she was there last year and was able to experience it, and it was just kind of like, oh, I'm here kind of thing for the first year. And now knowing that, all right, now I know what I need to do to be successful there. And she has stepped up her game too. And, and she's doing all the right things in practice. And that's what's really different for the two of them is usually that first time athletes qualify for nationals, they're just happy to be going. And it's difficult to keep them serious through the, the training part that happens for the next three weeks. And the two of them, they don't wanna just be there. They want to be successful there. So they are doing the things that they need to do uh, to accomplish that. Well, it's different because it's just me and Aaron, so there's a lot less people and kind of chill. Just kind of talk and swim and me and Aaron are good friends and we roomed together last year at Nationals, so we're both really excited. I just want to get a best time, so my time going in will be a 23.31, so anything faster than that is what I'm hoping for. And based on last year's results, if I go my seed time or a best time, I should either be in top eight or top, or in the finals. So top eight would be all American, which would be cool, but I'm not gonna overstretch anything. <laughs> Me and Bria get along really well, so it's nice to have someone you can kind of talk to about your races, talk to, I mean, about anything other than swimming also. So it's good to have someone you get along with and can kind of relate to with swimming and other things too. I mean, having that extra person helps in the pool as well. Um, so you're not coming to practice alone, getting in the pool, that's not very fun. Um, so it's nice to have someone else with to practice. Um, I really want to drop time from my previous times and it from conference. I didn't do as well as I'd hoped so. So just doing better than I did at conference and then having a good time too since it is my last meet and finishing it off strong, but also enjoying myself while doing that. You know, with the events that they're swimming, 50 freestyle and 100 backstroke, it is really about the little things because uh, literally a tenth of a second could be the difference between being in the top 16 and being um, like 20th or 24th. And so trying to figure out what are those little things and really it's about the starts and the turns, the breakouts. So. Every single day we are doing uh, 15 starts. Every single day we are working on their turns. Every single day we are counting uh, their strokes and trying to make everything exactly and perfect so that when they get to that meet, they don't have to think about it. They just, when, when the beep, they hear that, they go and they swim and they finish and they, there's no thought. It's just automatic, it's just habit. And they're able to swim you know, their fastest race at that point without having to, and, and even in the warm ups, having to obsess about, well, what, you know, do I need to practice this? No, you don't. You've been doing it for the last three weeks. You're ready right now. And, and they're already at that point today. It was really a turning point. You could see everything is clicking, everything is together. I wish the meet were next week, you know, because they're ready right now. So I think just that at another week, they're going to be able to fine tune just a little bit more. Uh, but it's it really feels right. They may be fast, but take them out of the pool and give them the most sour candy we could find, and you've got some sour swimmers. What is your relationship with sour candy? I love sour candy. I like the candies that say they're sour and then they're not really sour. <laughs> and I'm a bit indifferent about it. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. <laughs> I'd say it's the same thing too. I like, I don't know if I like sour candy. <laughs> I love sour candy. I don't like sour candy. <laughs> I like sweet. Candy's supposed to be sweet. I like sweets better, I don't know. <laughs> I love sour. I'm oh sweating. <laughs> <laughs> my hands are so clammy. Okay, ready? 
Are you cheering? Yeah. Okay. Mm. A little bad. <laughs> it's already hitting me. It's not that bad. It was a burn! <laughs> Not even bad. Mine's good. <laughs> Mine's really sour. When we come back, we'll hop out of the pool and onto the mat with national qualifier Zach Scott. Stick with us. The mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be kindled. There's a place where teaching and learning are transforming lives, where relationships drive deeper, more meaningful exploration and discovery based on mutual respect and trust, where you'll discover who you are and what you can achieve when you head out into the world to make it better. Life is more than a journey. It is a chance to transform. Have you ever bought the wrong car? Over half of all used car purchases end in regret. Wrong car, wrong terms and conditions, unexpected problems. You know what I'm talking about. Why put yourself through it? At Valley Pre-Owned, you can't buy the wrong car. We guarantee it. That's right, we guarantee it. Stop down today, learn more about our free 730 guarantee. It'll make your next used car purchase the best car buying experience you've ever had. And you might even have some fun at Valley Pre-Owned. Welcome back to the Dragons Live Dragons March On Special. We've got a grappler going to the NCAA National Tournament in Cedar Rapids, Iowa this weekend. 141 pounder Zach Scott is the lone representative for the Dragons after two pins in the NCAA Regional Tournament put him in. Here's Zach and head coach Chris Nelson. His first round match against the Central Missouri kid, he uh, pinned him, and then his second match he was behind, and, and he came back, and he, and he scored a fall in the third period, uh, the last period, and there wasn't a lot of time left, so that was a huge win for him to move on to the semis. In the semis, like I said, he ran into St. Claude State wrestler, uh, a tough wrestler, and he lost there. Uh, came back through the wrestlebacks. Uh, and beat uh, a nationally ranked opponent out of Lindenwood um, and came back in the third period on him too and recorded a fall there too. So uh, moved into the third and fourth place match. The third and fourth place match, uh, the top four guys uh, out of the region tournament move on to the national tournament. Uh, but he ended up uh, placing fourth. Uh, so he got his uh, bid into the national tournament. So we're excited for that. And one of my goals was just to make it to the national. So. That was really huge for me to get a couple pins at Nationals. A couple, I was seated six, so I was really wasn't expected to go to Nationals. It's top four goes, but I ended up pulling it out. And in dramatic fashion. I yeah, yep, yep, I was actually down by 10 points, and with my funky style, I can usually make anything happen. So I kept on going, and I was able to pull out a pin at the end there. So it's a lot different getting here at D2, and I know that everyone top to bottom at national is going to be tough so it's going to be a lot different I mean, i'm only 17 and 15 while everybody else is in the 20s and about six or less losses so i think they're going to probably overlook me a little bit but the goal is just to wrestle every match i really don't have a end goal is it'd be nice to all american but that's not really the goal right now my goal is just to wrestle every match as hard as i can and the result will take care of itself uh just continue to do what you've been doing all year coming into practice working hard um, working on the techniques, you know, that got you to the national tournament. And we're not going to go about making any big changes in his style. Continue to do what you've been doing all year um, and just wrestling hard, being committed, being dedicated to achieving your goals, uh, coming in here and working hard every day and being coachable. Uh, Zach started the year off at 149, um, you know, so 
Most of his losses throughout the year have been at 149. Uh, we had some injuries in our lineup, and, and we thought it was best, and Zach thought it was best also that he make the move down to 141 pounds. Uh, that's where he wrestled at Rochester Community College at the junior college uh, level last season where he was a national qualifier, and that weight just suits him best. Um, he was a little undersized for 149, and now he's a big 141 pounder, we feel. Um, Zach's a, a dangerous wrestler. He's an individual that uh, scores a lot of pins um, and that's great both in in team duels and both at tournaments uh, but he's a guy that you can never cone him out of a match he's always got the ability to come back on an individual and, and record the fall um, going in the national tournament I think Zach's goal is to be a national champion uh, he's just got to continue to wrestle the same way um, I know one of his goals at the beginning of the year was to be a national qualifier now he's achieved that goal now we got to look to get him on the podium be an all-american be a national champion but uh, 141's been a great fit for him, and, and we're looking to see him do big things uh, this weekend at Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Don't go anywhere. We've got AD Doug Peters on set for a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to get our Dragons to their national competitions. Mr. Goldman loved his family a lot, didn't he, Dad? He sure did. That's why he had State Farm Life Insurance, like you. So his family never has to worry, right? Mr. Goldman didn't have life insurance. Why not? He's just a goldfish. Ignore him. Call State Farm agent David Eggers in Moorhead today so your family won't have to worry about whether you have life insurance. We put the life back in life insurance. Get fired up for the new shop MSUMDragons.com, the official online store of Dragon Athletics, featuring top brands like Under Armour, Adidas, Columbia, and more. Get gear in women's, youth, toddler, and infant sizes, perfect for all of our Dragon fans. Support your favorite Dragon team with Select a Logo. Anything custom ships in 72 hours. And take your tailgating to the next level with items like bleacher chairs, tailgate tents, and lawn chairs. Get the gear and support your team with profits going directly to Dragon Athletics from shop MSUMDragons.com. Welcome back to the Dragons Live, Dragons March On special. Our athletics director, Doug Peters, is always fired up about something. Normally, he'd tell us what's on his desk, but today, we're welcoming him here to our desk. Doug, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's fantastic to be here. Dragons March On says it all right there, Webby. It, there's nothing like the postseason. There isn't, and especially when you advance to national championship play. Absolutely. So, first of all, we talked a little bit about the women at the beginning of the show. What's life like on the bubble for administrators and all the things that have to be negotiated and all the logistics, what's life like kind of on that seesaw of are we in or are we out? <laughs> you know, it's almost, notice I said almost, as painful for the administration as it is for the student athletes and the coaches. Obviously, they have a little bit different view of what's on the line, but for us, it just puts everything into pause. We think we have a chance, we have some ideas that we might advance, and you really can't do anything until you know. You can try and plan out what you need to do, but to actually push over some of the dominoes to get things going, you can't do that until you find out. And what are some of those dominoes, those things that go on behind the scenes that get our student athletes there and ready to go for national competitions? Well, when you think about behind the scenes, I mean, one of the significant conversations we had last week was, how do we do our selection show? Yeah, as, as we look at it, do we do a live selection show? Do we invite other people in? Do we just do it in a private gathering for a team? So lots of conversations ultimately came down to we are student athletes centered and having some conversations with the student athletes about what they preferred. So that's just one little piece about actually figuring out how we're going to find out. But then it's who's going where because there are multiple championships going on this weekend. We've got women's basketball in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You've got track and field down in Pittsburgh, Kansas. And they've got wrestling over in Iowa. So you've got different championships. How do you get your administrators there? Who's going where? Who's, who's doing what? And then just pulling all the little fun pieces together. Because it's more than just the competition. There's meetings beforehand to kind of go through practicing protocol. I mean, there's a lot that goes around that a lot of people don't know about when you actually get there and have to go through the process. Yep. Yesterday we got on the phone at about 1 o'clock for 50 minutes with the NCAA representatives and all of the coaches and administrators that are in this portion of the NCAA tournament and talked about practice times, where we're assigned for hotels, what our travel plans are, what other entities are we bringing with us, if you're bringing a band, if you're bringing a cheer squad, all of those things and trying to get everybody on the same page. And so then you've got all those logistics on top of it as well. And how many band members is, is a topic that comes up sometimes. Um, 
there's a lot of opportunities that come up with national attention. What are, what are some that you like to focus on uh, when you have national competitions going on in the Dragons? Well, we, when we think about our student athletes advancing in the, in the national championship play competition, you know, obviously it is one of the pinnacles of their career. I mean, you spend your entire career trying to get into a place to be the best you can be so you can win a championship. And now we're into that place with some of our student athletes. So you are constantly thinking about how do we make it special for our student athletes? How do, how do we make sure that the reality is the greatest that it can possibly be so that they have an experience for a lifetime. So that's where you start thinking about it at, and then you just kind of move down the line from there. And what other opportunities to engage, not just the student athletes, but the fans, alumni that tie in to an opportunity like this? Well, you know, it kind of depends with your administrative staff of whether they're chicken or not. You know, so let's talk about women's basketball. We went and we put together, somebody did a lot of work to pull together a elite not an elite eight, but uh, the re who is going to get in in our region? Right. You know, and then it's the debate: Do we put that out there? Do we not put out that out there? Because there's always some risk when you start to talk about as an administration what you think is going to happen. So you have to evaluate your risk assessment about what you're willing to say, what you're not willing to say, and then figure out how to grow that fan interest and excitement. And again, part of right. it is making those student athletes feel special. So it was interesting on the selection show on Sunday night. Uh, the debate behind the scenes do we put stuff out before what we think is going to happen or do we wait till we know what's going to happen and then try and blow some things up so it was awfully fun just watching the little video that uh, you guys shot during the selection show and the reaction of our team how many people watched that and trying to take those little pieces and blow them up and create as much interest and excitement for our fan base and for our family members of the players that are going as we possibly can and finally we can tell you're fired up about it. We brought the red jacket into Dragons Live today. <laughs> it's Dragons March on, baby. How fun is it for you to see all of their hard work finally pay off and, and get to this level? Words can't describe it, Webby. When you think about our student athletes that are going to be competing this weekend and next weekend, as I mentioned earlier, it's one of the pinnacles of their career. Same thing with the coaches. They spend a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears going into what they are doing. It's one of their passions in life. And as we try and help them you know, achieve what their dreams are and to actually see it begin to happen, to actually be going down to Pittsburgh, Kansas to watch Brian Huber, who legitimately has a chance to win a national championship in the long jump, to watch our women's basketball team, you know, to watch Zach on, on the wrestling match. You know, the, words can't describe the emotion I have when it comes out because it is something that's so special that everyone has worked so hard for. Well, thank you for all you've done for that and getting us all in the right places for, for this weekend and next weekend. And thanks for joining us here on Dragons Live. Thanks for having me. And everybody, cheer on the Dragons. It's Dragons March On. Fired up. Let's look again at the full schedule of our national competitions. You can head to msumdragons.com slash dragonsmarchon or download the Dragons app for everything you need to follow for your Dragons at the NCAAs. That's msumdragons.com slash dragonsmarchon or simply search MSUM in your app store and download the Dragons app today. You can always get the best Dragons gear at shopmsumdragons.com. Right now you can get 15% off all jerseys including custom jerseys at shopmsumdragons.com through March 12th. Plus, get your women's basketball NSIC championship gear as well, all on sale right now at shopmsumdragons.com. Thanks again for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. For our director, Alex Nelson, and myself, thank you for watching Dragons Live. Good luck to our national qualifiers, and of course, go Dragons.